ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 167, I think, of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I'm fucking super psyched with how tickets have been uh, selling for No Slide Season, my brand new tour. No Slide Season is officially open and tickets have been going nuts. I'm not going to plug it for ages, I just want to get this out. Uh, There are less than 100 tickets left to the first Melbourne show. I have smashed my uh, first week sales in every single place I've done. It's been fucking crazy. Who would have thought that putting out videos consistently for a year would sell tickets? (laughs) Um, It's been going absolutely nuts. And uh, yeah, Melbourne is almost sold out. Uh, Sydney's almost gone. Perth is half full. Uh, pretty much all the major cities now are over half full, so I would really get your tickets now, especially for that first Melbourne show. It's almost sold out, okay? So loosespheres.com slash gigs if you want to get your tickets. Uh, I am really, really excited for these shows. It's looking like it's going to be the biggest tour of my career, and I'm just fucking so stoked and happy and lucky that uh, that seems to be happening every year. Every year it gets bigger, every year... I get better, the crowds get bigger, and people keep coming back. So it's amazing, and I'm very, very grateful. And uh, I can't wait to do this tour in September. So no slide season, it's on sale now, lewespears.com slash gigs, especially if you're from Melbourne and Brisbane. Those two cities, hurry the fuck up. Um, and I think I've sold more, I think officially sold more than one ticket to Gimpy. It could be like three. So that's, that's a, you know, that's a new record. Tripling your sales is a big deal in a couple of days, unless tripling... Unless you're tripling one, which is <laughs> how many I sold. So, uh, yeah, everywhere except for Gimpy is going absolutely nuts, man. And it's really cool. Uh, what do I, Dude, with, with that good news, if that wasn't happening, I probably would have fucking killed myself because I had to take the fucking computer to the Apple store, dude. And it wasn't like, wasn't like taking a laptop either, right? I had to take a fucking iMac, like the big giant 27 inch desktop and before you can't start writing in the fucking comment section uh, why did you buy a mat why did you buy when are you gonna learn i didn't buy it okay it was given to me by a family friend in perfect working condition and as soon as i touched it it broke i reckon i must be cursed i don't think apple is the problem guys i think it's me i think it's definitely me because you know what happened i came home my old laptop the battery's dead, but you know, it's fucking almost nine years old, so that's fine. I'll, I'll accept that from any brand. Nine years out of a laptop that I took everywhere with me, acceptable. Three days out of a fucking $2,000 iMac that I didn't pay for, I don't like it. Bro, so anyway, this, this, this fucking iMac, it kept turning off, right? While Keelan's using it, the editor that I have, trying to try, he's trying to fucking make videos for you cunts, and the computer's just like, not today, turns off. And for no reason, too. Because you know when, when your computer shuts off, generally when you turn it back on, it goes, oh, your computer restarted because this happened, or it crashed because this. The computer seemed to have no idea why it was turning off. Normally the computers are pretty good when they crash or when they turn off or restart. They're like, oh, we had to restart because I overheated, or this is out of date, or this or that is broken. Nothing. It would just do it without warning and turn on like, like nothing happened. It's, I had fucking amnesia, bro. It would just fall over and then fucking wake up and be like, who am I? What am I doing? Oh, editing? Yeah, I love to edit. And then it would do it again. Six times a day, sometimes not for three days. Completely random. So I go through all the fucking tech specs. I go through all the the articles, all the help stuff. Do this, try that. Turn it on, hold down these keys. None of it worked. Fucking nothing. None of it worked. So then I get onto the Apple support, right? And I'm talking to those cunts and they're like, they try this, try this. None of it worked, right? And then they go, okay, what you need to do at this point is it must be a hardware problem because obviously the software has no idea what's going on. So there's no software errors. So it must be a hardware issue. I'm like, sweet, I guess I'll fucking get that fixed, right? I'm like, what's the issue? And they're like, we don't know. So you got to take it into the fucking Apple store. Dude, if you thought it was a shit time taking your phone into the Apple store, right? driving to the shopping center, finding a park when it's busy, going through the center with your phone that doesn't work, walking through all those fucking cunts buying shit they don't need, and then you get into the into the blue shirt cunt store, 
the Apple store and there's all these fucking nerds walking around selling shit that costs too much to dumb cunts who don't have enough money and can't afford it, but buy it anyway. You thought that was bad. Try doing it while you're carrying a fucking, got to be like 15 kilo, 27 inch iMac computer through a shopping center, up escalators, down escalators, through the parking lot. Fucking exhausting. Everyone's staring at you like you've just stolen it from the nearest JB Hi-Fi and you're walking through the center like it's yours. That's got to be top 10 most embarrassing things I've ever done in my life. Thank fuck I didn't get a spot nebsed. Could you imagine if you saw that video, me walking through Chadston Shopping Center, biggest shopping center in Australia, just carrying a fucking iMac computer in my hands, exhausted and angry and furious. Like, whoa, who did that guy kill? To steal that computer. Anyway, so we get into the fucking Apple store and it is the biggest, I reckon gotta be like one of the biggest stores I've ever been to in my life. If we're talking one level shit, two levels don't count, department stores don't count. I'm talking like one shop from one brand that sells only what they make. That is the biggest store I've ever been to in my life and somehow it was still fucking crowded. And I gotta say, two thirds of the cunts in there seemed to be staff walking around in their blue shirts doing absolutely fuck all. Tapping on their phones, talking to each other about how much Android sucks, which is true, but also shut the fuck up if you work in an Apple store. I reckon that every single employee of an Apple store they get a personality uploaded to them when they when they start working there that they, they like they just hire anyone it doesn't matter every single person who goes in for an interview with the apple store gets the job because that that doesn't matter if you've like if you have a horrible work history if you are always late to work if you get a horrendous reference if you fucking harass sexually harassed all the girls in the bathroom of your last job doesn't matter because as soon as you get to that Apple store and as soon as you're hired, they plug you into the system, delete your personality and upload the same personality that every other cunt who works there has, which is insufferably boring. Hi, I'm the human equivalent of a phone with no apps on it. Remember when you first got your phone and it turns on? and there's nothing unique about it at all, and it's exactly the same as every other phone on the planet that has just turned on for the first time. Zero apps, not much functionality, generic background, exactly the same, no wear and tear, nothing individual about it at all. Do you remember that? Yes? Well, I am the human equivalent of that phone. The most boring cunt on planet Earth. Polite, Zero interests, nothing unique about it. Welcome to the Blue Shirt Cunt Store. I will be your assistant for today, Mr. Boring Cunt. How do you manage to be boring and annoying? That's what I want to know. That is a unique personality trait that every single cunt who works at the Apple Store seems to have. Because every boring person I've ever met in my life is not annoying. They're just boring it's like, oh, this guy again. You're not annoyed. You're just like talking to them and you're like, yeah, this is boring. You know, like I've never been annoyed in a library. You know what I mean? Like a library, you're like, oh yeah, it's a library, kind of boring, but it doesn't piss you off. Like you don't walk into a library and be like, ah, oh, it's so quiet in here. It's so fucking annoying. There's nothing to do. Ah, you just get bored. You just get immediately turned off and you're like, oh, this is kind of boring. Like wait, you know, like... Like waiting in line somewhere for a reasonable amount of time. You don't get annoyed, you just get a little bit bored, right? You never get annoyed at something boring. But somehow, every single one of those fucking Apple Store employees, when I went in there, I talked to about six. They managed to be boring and the most insufferable cunts on planet Earth and exactly the same as each other. Default, annoying, boring personality. Hate it, right? So I take in my fucking giant 27-inch computer, And I take it into the store and I'm fucking holding the thing, right? None of these cunts come up to me. They're all off doing their own shit. I walk in with a computer, clearly desperately in need of help. Like if you walk into an Apple store holding a 27-inch clearly used computer, that's like walking into a hospital with a baby who's been shot. 
obviously it's a fucking emergency. You would never do that unless it was a life-threatening emergency. Someone fucking help me. I walked in with the equivalent of a child that has been shot in the heart to a fucking hospital and all of the doctors there looked at me and then went, gee, someone should help that guy and then straight back to their fucking phones. Dude, what is this place? Talk to me, you fucking insufferably boring, annoying cunts. Anyway, so I I walk up to one guy. I'm like, hey, dude, I need some help. And he goes, oh, sorry, I'm about to give a uh, presentation on how to use GarageBand. And I went, oh, okay. Well, how about instead of doing that, you leave the store and jump off a bridge because that is not a presentation that needs to be given to anybody. And I'm incredibly sorry that that was something that you were taught and have to do every day. Because you know he doesn't do one. He does fucking probably one of those every single week. All right, it's time to teach absolute fucking dead shits how to use GarageBand at the Apple Store. Talk about lowest of the low of society. Anyone who goes to the Apple Store to learn how to use GarageBand. We should round those people up and put them on a fucking island somewhere else. Say, come on, guys, this is the tutorial. This is the advanced tutorial for GarageBand. And everyone's going, oh, bro, I'm going to be a fucking music producer on GarageBand. And then you just ship them off to an island with no boats. No, no, okay, you, you don't give them boats, but you give them heaps of planes. So many planes, fully functioning runways, air traffic control, but no pilots, right? Because you know that nobody who's lining up for a tutorial for Garage Band knows how to fly a plane, and you fucking know that they wouldn't be able to work it out either, right? So you just put them on an island with fuckloads of planes, and you go, guys, if you want to come back, all you're going to do is fly to that runway over there. And then you just sit with air traffic control and watch all of these dumb cunts crash into each other and blow the planes up. Some of them will probably explode before they even started the engine. They'd be like, is this how you do it? And they'd throw a fork in the fucking engine. Surely this is how it works. Put their hand in an air turbine. Couldn't be more harder than fucking garage band. <laughs> anyway, I go to the fucking thing and, I'm, and the guy's like, oh... I guess you need help. I'm like, yeah, you fucking reckon? Because at this point, I've been walking for 20 minutes. That's how big the shopping center was. From the car park to the fucking store, I've been walking for 20 minutes holding this giant computer. We took a wrong turn. Had to go around the other way. Never been angry in my life. We finally get to the fucking Apple store. I get there. Everyone ignores me for five minutes. And then finally, some cunt comes up to me and goes, hello, I am a serviette of a human. I'm going to annoy you and be boring. How can I help? And I go, well, doorknob, this is fucked. Fix it. And he goes, all right, man, I'll be right back. And then he goes to the back for some reason. And I just fucking, I'm holding this thing. I just just like, fuck it. I just put it on the desk in the Apple store in front of one of the display phones. I was like, fuck your view of this shit phone. This is where my computer goes now. And then I start thinking like, oh man, I'm not going to be able to leave with this because I'll pick it up from the desk and then just get tackled by security. Put that down. <laughs> um, anyway, he comes back five minutes later and I've, I've been sitting here listening to a fucking tutorial on how to use garage band from some fucking cunt standing up there like Steve Jobs playing it on an iPad, playing the drums on an iPad through the speakers of the Apple store. What the fuck, right? Anyway, they come back and he goes, all right, let's take a look at your computer. He plugs it in. He boots it up. He starts doing this. He starts doing that. He runs diagnostics. He goes, blah, blah, blah. He, I, I, I talked to him for about 20 minutes about, have you tried this? I'm like, yes. Have you tried that? Yes. Have you tried this? Yes. I have. He went through a list of fucking everything single solution he could think of and my answer to every single one of them was I specifically remember doing that because you guys don't understand me going to that Apple store is last absolute ultimate last fucking resort I would rather die than go there 
and find out that I could have done that at home to fix it. I exhausted every single solution. So he runs me through everything. And then he looks at me and he goes, wow, man, you've really tried everything. That's crazy. Like I was the first person in IT history to actually try all of the different solutions that there are. He was absolutely dumbfounded and I don't blame him because I've worked in customer service before on the phones and you talk to the dumbest people on planet Earth. Help, my computer doesn't work. Have you tried pressing the on button? Oh, oh, that works. Or even just talking to old people who didn't grow up with technology so they just fucked from the start. Like technology is such a thing where you have to grow up with it otherwise you're lost you know, it's like, otherwise you come in at 60 years old, it's like moving to another fucking country and trying to pick up the language. Your, the, that part of your brain doesn't work anymore, all right? You grow up with it or you're fucked. I was talking to my grandma the other day and I taught her how to use my, listen to my podcast because she wanted to listen to the radio show, right? And she said she listened to my solo podcast, which by the way, when I start it, when I make this and when I start yelling about cunts killing themselves and throwing themselves off bridges because they do garage band tutorials at uh, the Apple store, I never really think that my grandma might be listening to that. <laughs> I had no idea she listened. So hi, grandma. Anyway, she goes, I listen to your show. Why do you talk so fast? You're always, so, you're always talking so fast. I can barely understand you. And I was like, what do you mean? I talk, I guess I talk a little bit fast when I get angry. But for the most part, I feel like I talk pretty normal to how I talk in real life. And she goes, no, you, you, in the last one you did, you talked way faster than normal. So I'm like, oh, that's strange. And then, then I help her out with something else on her phone. She's like, how do I listen to the new Luke and Lewis show? I'm like, Grandma, it's the same as the radio. It's here. She goes, oh, that's really convenient. Go and listen. Luke and Lewis, episode one and two out right now. Episode three coming out on Tuesday. It's going nuts. People love it. Anyway, I teach you how to do that. And then I, and then I hit play. And then... I realized that she's been listening to podcasts at 1.5 times speed the whole time she's had the podcast app. And she goes, oh, that's why. And like, and it says 1.5 times, but hey, she didn't grow up with technology. How can you expect her to know that shit? It's like yelling at, an, at a Chinese immigrant who came here at 60. And you're like, hey, why don't you speak the language fluently? And he's like, oh, because that part of my brain doesn't work anymore because I'm 60 and I've finished learning for, the, for my life. You don't learn anything new after 60, bro. That's it. The only thing you learn after 60 is like how to be a little bit more racist. That's it. You're like, well, I'm stuck in my ways. I might as well go a bit deeper. Get out of me country. So this cunt, he's talking to my fucking, he's talking to my computer, doing all this stuff that only he can do. He starts running diagnostics, Apple diagnostics that, uh, that are only using all these codes and shit that only he knows, stuff I couldn't do. I'm like, okay, great. Well, at least something's happening. I guess this will be fixed. And he goes, yeah, look, I've run all the software diagnostics. Looks like it's a hardware problem. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to run one more and it should tell me which piece of hardware is the problem. And I'm like, great. And he goes, while this is running, I'm going to talk to a colleague and see what he thinks because I've never seen this before. And I was like, well, there we go. I've got a unique problem. For once, it's not Apple just being fucking garbage and breaking for the normal reason. At least it's got a unique strain of AIDS, you know. At least that'll bring something exciting to his day because... I'm sure later on he has to give a 50-minute presentation on how to use fucking iMovie to three senior Asian, Asian students who have to edit something for uni. And that's, this is the highlight of his day, trying to work out what unique type of aids my computer has while, while, trying, while trying to maintain a pleasant conversation with the angriest, biggest Australian man he's ever seen in his fucking life who's clearly like a millisecond from snapping it, there's the fire and murder behind his eyes. On, on, on the surface, he looks calm. But un underneath, he's planning out exactly how to take out the Apple store. And he looks at that Australian man and he knows deep down he could do it. <laughs> um, anyway, the diagnostic runs. Hard drive, fine. Graphics card, fine. This is fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. Gets down to the final thing, the RAM. Right? 
And then there's an error. I'm like, oh my God, it must be the RAM. That's great because RAM is really easy to replace, even in Max. Great. That's good. I'll just take one of the RAM sticks out, replace it. Bam. Brand new computer. And he goes, okay, so it says the, there's an issue with the RAM, but the only issue is is that it's not, uh, it's, it's, uh, you're using Samsung RAM. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with it. The computer's just going, hey, this isn't made by Apple. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, then the computer doesn't know. No one knows what the fuck's wrong with it. So he goes, what I'm going to do is I think it's a RAM problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the two Samsung RAM. And what you can do when you get home is you can, you can turn it on and see if that works. And I said, why don't you take it out now? And then we see if it works. And he goes, why don't you just do that at home? And I said, why don't I do that here? And he goes, how about you just do it at home and you can work it out yourself? And I said, I came fucking through the shopping center with a 27-inch computer that everyone thought I stole. Fix it now. Anyway, then I went home. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because I backed down and I was like, I was so fuck I'm fed up with it. I was like, whatever. He says it'll work. I'll try that. I go home. I turn it on. It doesn't turn on. It turns on, but it doesn't load. And it just sits on that fucking loading screen permanently. Great. Incredible. So I came in, right? This, this is what happened, right? If this was a hospital, this is what happened. I came in with a child who had been shot, had a life-threatening but survivable injury. And I said, someone help. My child has been shot and I'm in a hospital surrounded by professionals, the perfect environment, full of people who can save my son's life. Please help me. And then doctors came out of their surgery rooms. They came running. One of them was giving a presentation on garage band and even he put down the iPad and they all came round and they all said, don't worry, Lewis, this is a life-threatening injury, but I swear it, we will save your son. And I said, I trust you doctors. I know you can save my son. I know you can do it. And then I handed over my son suffering from a life-threatening but survivable and fixable issue to the people who can save him. And then they pulled out a knife and stabbed him to death and finished the fucking job and killed him and then kicked me out and said, you're welcome, fuckhead. I took my fucking computer in to get it fixed and they murdered it. Now it, now it doesn't turn on. It's fucked. Nothing I can do. I've gone through all the troubleshooting. You know what? I'm not taking it back. For fuck's sake, man. And you know what? It's not even my computer. So let me change that. That's like if I was babysitting someone's son and they got shot and I took it to the hospital and then they murdered the kid. Now I'm going to take its dead body back to the people who gave it to me and be like, hey, thanks for the computer. It's fucked irreparably. Enjoy. There you go. Don't need it anymore. I broke it. In a week. So thanks, Apple, for that. Fucking awesome. And now Keelan is back to editing five days a week on a MacBook Air that he bought before he started working with me and is not for video editing because it's a MacBook Air. And the only thing those things are good for is Word documents and porn. So, guys... If there are any late videos this week, you fucking know why. Oh my god. Um, and I can't, I can't afford to get a computer, Apple, Windows, or otherwise. Um, so I guess I'll just have to fucking suffer and deal with it until, <laughs> until uh, uh, I work something out. Loosespears.com slash gigs. Get your tickets. If you're outside of Australia, support me on Patreon because, oh, fuck. The one thing that I need to do my job, cunted. Anyway, what else happened this week? Um, You see this comedian got in trouble? Uh, This female comedian, I'd never heard of her. Uh, Her name, I put it on my Twitter. I put the joke on my Twitter. Her name is 
Dina Hashem. Looks like she's from New York because she's doing the cellar. She did this joke about um, Triple X Tentacion. And it's a funny joke, right? The joke, I'm paraphrasing, but basically she was like, he got shot and that's horrible. And she said, that's horrible and it's bad and it's not a good thing that he died. Uh, but he was killed while he was buying a vehicle with $50,000 of cash. And all I thought was that would make a really good ad for Venmo which is an app that you send cash to friends on your phone, right? Funny joke. That's a good ad to not carry cash around. That's a funny, dark, fucked joke. Definitely a joke. Also prefaced with, it's horrible that this guy died. And uh, that was put out on Comedy Central. And mind you, the audience, if you watch the video, packed, everyone's pissing their pants. Oh. My girlfriend's calling. Hey, Hello, you're on the podcast. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, can you come and let me in? Oh, you're outside? Okay. Yeah. Thanks okay. for joining me on Speared Sundays. Talk to you soon. You. Catch you later, Karen. <laughs> One second. All right, I'm back. Jasmine's here as well. This is what happens every time Lewis is too lazy to do his podcast during the week. It wishes when he's meant to do it. Too lazy. Yeah. I launched a tour. Because I launched my new podcast. I did uh -huh. three videos and two videos and all the clips for everything. You fucking slacker. I've been anything but lazy. You're a, you're a welfare queen. That's oh, what you are. fuck off. Because <laughs> he's meant to do it during the week um, while he's working. Because we spend weekends together because we don't live together. Yeah. But very often recently, you just haven't managed things to get everything have, yeah. done. Things have been very hectic recently. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but that's great. Buy tickets to his tour. Yes. It's going to uh, be good. Hey, how good's Melbourne selling? I don't know. I haven't seen the sale reports. Oh, really? I okay, you? tell me. There's... What? Can I say that? The first show. Not not overall. Ah. Yeah. But the second one's going nuts too. Oh, wait. This is a symbol for something, isn't it? I think it's all right. Mamma but I... mia. <laughs> I'm doing that hand symbol, like the okay symbol. Um... um uh, so, so, what were you talking about? I was about? just talking about um, this comedian, Dina Hashem, is in heaps of trouble for a joke she told about triple XX. Yeah, you told me this about this this I morning. can't say triple XX. That's six X's. Triple XX. Triple XXX, nine X, ten, lots of X's. Have a simpler name. Hey, what about? Can't change it now, Tentacian. Katie. I like that. So, Tentacian. <laughs> um, so, if you don't know, the backstory is he's an amazing musician and uh, he was tragically shot and killed. And this is uh, the woman's joke about it. I found it, so we can all listen. Wait, hold on. What? He also was in controversy during his life. And I think that's one of the reasons she's oh, yeah. joking about him. He's yeah. not just a saint who got killed. He's also beat the fuck out of his pregnant girlfriend. Apparently, he had mental problems, but... But he I was, do think that he was that, repentant. I do think which that he was He's killed. Not an unrepentant pregnant girlfriend basher. No, I think <laughs> I think what's particularly tragic about his death is that he was killed right right at the moment where he was really becoming a much better person than what he was. Because didn't he go to jail? Yeah, he went. I think he did. He went to jail, and he I got believe. out, and he was starting to be a better person. Apparently, yeah, and so and the story he goes. like the the. When he was killed, he was buying a motorbike, I believe, for charity, and he what? was doing he was doing some really good things. Uh, and uh, it's it's a shame. But that, it's that kind that of a meme because like some people, because there's like these the you know my eleven year old brother loves him. Yes, to the point loves where him. if you talk bad about him, he will. Cry, or if you bring up the which fact, is so YouTube comment <laughs> Twitter, like everyone that's yelling <laughs> about him uh, is exactly is just 11, an 11 years, years old. old and can't like comprehend. if you bring up the fact that. That he's dead and my little brother will run out of the I've room crying. I've literally seen this maybe three times. It's very <laughs> it's like it's very sad and a little bit funny but you know 11 year old shit and that's like but there's a whole heap of people like that who are, who are like on Twitter. incredibly dedicated to him yeah. and his memory. And then there are a whole heap of people who's like, wait a minute, this guy beat the fuck out of his pregnant girlfriend. Yeah. Why are we sad that he's dead? Yeah. So there's like a culture war around this guy who, by the way, his music is beautiful. His, yeah, I think his music is undeniably amazing. I think it's really, really good. But I think really that's the context. I mean, you don't yeah. need to know the context for the joke. But, but that's what it is. It's not just someone joking about it or trying to oh, Anyway. All right, uh, play, play tune, play the here's joke. The, here's the joke. Oh, let me just turn my volume up. Here's the joke. 
Morning, XXX Tentacion. <laughs> he's a he's a rapper who uh, was murdered. He's dead now. Um, he was he was shot. He was on his way to buy a car with fifty thousand dollars in cash, and somebody shot him and took the money, which is very tragic. But I think also it would be a very good Venmo commercial. <laughs> 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 That's the first thing I thought when I heard that. <laughs> like, I don't have Venmo. I should get Venmo. <laughs> That's the joke. And people <clears throat> are losing their minds. Like, this thing, this video has like 1,500 retweets and it's been posted everywhere else calling for her to be cancelled and for Comedy Central to be cancelled, which is Wait, just Wait, I just funny. want to ask, do people on Twitter realise you can't actually cancel a person? Or a television network. What do you mean? Like Comedy Central. They're Wait, going, they, cancel asking... Comedy Central. That's a, that's like going, cancel Fox, I cancel mean, Disney. These kids overestimate their power. Oh, like, for sure. Is this just a new way of people telling them to kill themselves? Is it because yeah. kill themselves is too offensive for them to say? I don't know. It's like, and, and all of these people you know for a fact laugh at 9-11 or all these other memes about death and that. I don't know, but that. they would definitely laugh at that. Okay, well, how about this? This is my strongest counter-argument. Why can he, the guy, rap and make music about murder, death and killing people, but you can't make comedy about murder, death and killing people? The reason why people huh? are as sensitive around comedy is that you're making people laugh at a topic. When you're singing about a topic, you're not making a happy feeling out of it. I don't know, man. I feel like that if you're rapping about killing, you can make people feel angry about it. And yeah, I feel but like a joke isn't going to make people feel... Well, it does make some people feel But the feel point angry, is, I mean... But that's not can, the point of the joke. The point of the joke is to make people laugh, yeah. which belittles the topic. That's why people get upset. But I feel like people can hear music about killing people and him saying he has some lyric about, uh, like... Uh, what was the lyric that I that I posted? He's got a lyric that's like quite explicitly about killing people, which I think is totally fine. <laughs> um, well, here's what I think. I think they are quite different. I think that making comedy about something and it. making different sorts of art that has different emotional reactions are quite different. Mm. But I think that's fine. I think it's totally fine to make light of, yeah. s- of horrible things. For sure, because think- people don't shouldn't take it seriously. So his, his lyric is... Fear will, be, fear will be plentiful. Death will be bountiful. I will spare none of you peasants. And everyone goes, oh, that's good music. And I'm not taking that seriously. Obviously, he's not actually going to kill every every peasant in the world. But then someone will joke about something and be like, oh, we're taking that joke seriously. Which is just funny to me because jokes, by definition, are not meant to be taken seriously. Um, but anyway, so this... So the people have lost it and gone nuts. And to the point where I just checked out her thing, she's come out and apologized because people are harassing her and all these fucking 11-year-olds 11, 11 with Twitter are threatening to kill her and all this shit. <laughs> I wonder if my little brother is part you know of what? the I, mob. I, I would not be surprised. <laughs> because should, I don't think he has a Twitter account, actually. Thank oh, God. Thank God. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... And Comedy Central has uh, removed it and it won't be going on TV. Yeah, she apologised. She basically said she didn't mean to offend anyone. It was which is which. If I <clears> think that if you're a comedian, you should never apologise for a joke. Do you know what I what I would have said? Because it gives all of those people so much power, and also those people, if you look at her apology, don't want it, and they don't care, and it doesn't slow them down or or you know, or placate them at all. No, it, you ma- it makes them feel vindicated, sh- more powerful, and makes them go harder. I don't think you should apologize because it was a good joke, and the purpose of yeah. the joke was to make light of that, and she succeeded in her purpose. Clearly, because there's video evidence now, of the entire that room pissing some people. themselves. That upset some people, but yeah. they can get fucked. Do you know what? She- <laughs> Do you know what she should have said? What, what should I she would have said? said? Okay, what would you say? I would have said. Um, um, I was thinking about it before. I would say, look, <laughs> I'm sorry that I offended people, but he's not exactly around to get upset about it, is he? <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> That's funny. And then I would have said, Venmo, hit me up for sponsorship options. No, no, then then you <laughs> you put your Venmo so people can send you money. Oh, can people right, okay. Yeah, so you and you would definitely because get money. Because here's the thing. She made a very good point. Who the fuck walks around with fifty thousand dollars in cash? cash? I mean, That's if crazy. I was walking around with that, I would be like, "Oh my god, I am going to get shot and killed." He was streaming on Instagram. That's oh, how it happened. Well, maybe you know natural selection, babe. No, hey, don't. I don't want all these cunts on my fucking YouTube. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. I didn't mean anything. Uh, here's my Venmo. <laughs> Please don't come at me, fourteen year old anime Twitter profile pictures. I don't know. I just, I just think that it, that it is funny that they won't, the irony, and they won't take his lyrics about murder seriously, but they will take jokes about murder seriously. No, jokes is a happy feeling. You don't get it. All these people are like so caught up with emotions, mm. right? So the reason outrage culture exists is because they think no one should have to feel bad emotions. Yeah. And people are feeling people feeling good emotions about his death makes them feel bad emotions. Yeah. Whereas people feeling bad emotions about his murder lyrics does not make them feel bad emotion. Do you get it? Like it's really twisted. No, but I mean they're they're clearly taking the joke seriously. They're not taking the joke seriously. They know it's a joke. They just no, don't like the they're fact... they're saying that this is not funny. This is a bad joke. It's not good. And they're taking it literally. Well, it doesn't... That's the thing. Like, I don't get why comedians should apologise because here's the thing is that you used to only have to write for your audience. Yeah. Now there's a potential that the whole world's going to see. And mm. the way a joke works, there is always going to be a percentage of the world who, A, doesn't think it's funny... B, potentially a fucking pissed off about it. And I think it's just part of the job description with comedian now is that having balls enough to be able to say, look, I don't care. This is my job. I made the majority of people yeah. happy with this. <clears throat> and I'm happy. I'm not going to apologize well, for that's, it. Well, that's the thing. Like, that's what I always think when people get offended by people my comedy. People have always been getting offended by comedy. There just wasn't yeah. Twitter around before. It's like, it's that, like that's, that's the thing. It's like these people that are angry and shit one heaps of them are underage so they could never buy a ticket or come and see a show anyway and two none of these cunts understand stand up clearly so they would never <clears throat> come to a show so all you're doing is appealing to an audience that one did not know who you were never liked you and never will like you even after you apologize so you try and make those people happy who will never be happy and never come to your show or support I mean, you ever. If you... And you lose all of the people that liked the joke yeah, because... that, that might go, oh, fuck, she's funny, she doesn't give a fuck, I'm going to check her out, and then they check but you I out and happens, they see you apologise. I think what happens is that no one understands, like, the intensity of... Uh, the, the outrage, Twitter comments and the outrage, outrage culture. Is, is full when on. you're being called out, it's really full on. Yeah. And we understand it because we come from a trolling background and we go, oh, you know what? It's no big deal. And if we don't feed it, it it's going days. to die. Yeah, yeah. It's going to die down. And getting, um, you know, someone attacking your internet connection or posting your details online, it's really not that bad. Mm. So we can go, yeah. We've been on the side of the perpetrators. Been there, done that. It's not that bad. Not that bad. Most people have no idea about... It is, you know what, the, the first time it ever happened to me, it was pretty scary. Because you know what it is? It's trolling for social justice. Like, they yeah. wouldn't say that they're trolling, trolling but cause. they are trolling for yeah. a cause. And it it's so intense. And yeah. people have no idea, because they've never trolled before. So, and they had no idea that the internet was capable of this. And then all of a sudden it's happening mm -hmm. to them. And they're like, fuck, I... I obviously need to apologize. Yeah, it's uh No. It's it's pretty wild. It's it's no, very you do interesting. Not. Tell them to suck your clip. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, um, I I think that's where we're going to end that topic. Um we've got about uh, we've got about 7 minutes here. Do you reckon we can smash out a life advice question, Jess? Yeah. Can it actually be a question this time? Last time it was just a story of one guy who did all of the drugs. Yeah, true. I, um, I'll have a look. <laughs> so, uh, if you don't know, Miss Lane is a bit at the end. There's the worst part of the podcast. I wish we could cancel it. Yeah, but unfortunately, Everyone we couldn't. tweet at. I might have to apologise. Miscellaneous for it. bit at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Demand that Lewis Pierce apologises. Um, I actually don't have any questions. I have. I want to try stand up, but I've answered that question like thirty times. Do it. 
Okay. All right. No, I meant the person who wants to try stand up. Yeah, that's it. the answer. Do it. Be really shit at it. And one day you won't be. You will be consistently shit for at least six months, and that's fine. And it'll be. Re- that's my answer. And it's normal to be scared. Yeah. Um, I think I'm actually going to make a video about it, and I'm just going to send people the link. And you should also make a video about all of your gear and how you run your business here, because it's really interesting. Yeah, I should do that. I will do that. <clears throat> um, okay. Yeah, I don't have any and questions. And like how you used to do it before you had Keelan, and now that you have Keelan, how that's changed your business. Because the other thing so is that better. there's heaps of YouTubers out there who are really big and they can afford to put it on editor. But, but they don't. They just don't. Yeah. And here's the thing is that you probably would have been that person as well. But I always, when your business is getting to the point where something needs to move, yeah, I just start harassing him and nagging him until he f- just throw goes, money at it, throw money at it. I'm like, I don't need it. I don't I'm need like, it. Your life will be so yeah. much better. Like this warehouse, he would have never got this warehouse, but it's completely revolutionized the way his business works. It's awesome. I mean, that's why we're doing Luke and Lewis because, uh, I mean, yeah, if we, that's why we're doing Luke and like Lewis. Like if you were if still we working radio, out of your bedroom and yeah. editing your own videos. It would be fucked. You would still be just as bad as miscellaneous bit at the end. <laughs> It's pretty bad. Okay, well, we got uh, five minutes. Jazz, what have you been up to? Me? Yeah. Not much. Not much? No. How's your podcast going? Uh, it's very um, intermittent. Yeah? yeah? Intermittent? Oh, you're yeah. doing the old Speared Sundays method of release? <laughs> I Which is, it might come before. out, it might not. Yeah. You've never heard Speared Sundays? No. They came up, they came up with it. Why didn't you tell me? The cunts. I'm, I don't know. I'm sorry, I couldn't Probably Probably because it that. always makes me so angry, but then I go, no, they're right. <laughs> A lot of the time, it's justified. Um, no, it's going well. Uh, What's your podcast called? For them, Ravenous. I know what it is. Yeah, I know. It's Ravenous. Uh, Unfortunately, you can't change the with, name. Ravenous with Jasmine Artieri. Why can't you change the name? I mean, if she doesn't release it, there's nothing funny you can change it to. Can you? What? Speared Some Days is hilarious. Oh. Rather, rather never. <laughs> <laughs> rather never. Um, no, it's been really good. So it's actually, it's like I talk about serious <coughs> topics, but I keep them l- funny. Uh, and then sometimes I just have episodes talking about my life and things that are happening. I had an angry episode. You get angry a lot on your podcast, don't you? I think the first 20 minutes of this episode was about me taking that fucking thing to the uh, Apple store. Oh, do you know the only reason I, I convinced him to take it? He needed to take it for a month and I convinced him to take it. I said, babe, think about the podcast content. <laughs> you will get out of it. That is like 50% <laughs> of the reason I went is because I knew <laughs> that it would be like, well, that's actually half a podcast of me screaming. Yeah. It's always my best content is going to the Apple store and yelling about it. Yeah. I said that what I did was like the equivalent of me taking a dying child into a hospital mm. and then the doctor's running out to fix it but instead they just stabbed it to death and finished it off. <laughs> that's what they did. They killed it. Wow, that's that's a lot. Definitely came home worse. Can you apologise for that? Why? Think of everyone who has taken their child to the hospital so, and then the doctors have to stabbed To all of those it. people who never liked me, never will like me <laughs> and will never come to my show, especially after this apology, I want to say... You are my target demographic and I will do anything to please you. To all of my fans who you are disappointed in me for doing shut this, up. Shut up. fuck no. you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, make sure you check out Luke and Lewis. The first two episodes are out right now and they're really, really good. And uh, people are loving it and it's growing heaps and uh, be really, really good. And also, if you don't have time for another podcast, Follow it on Instagram or follow the Luke and Lewis Highlights YouTube channel. We just post the best bits. Come on. You have time for another podcast. You fucking what do, What are you guys you? doing? Like, you've chosen to listen to Lewis talk for 20 minutes about his iMac. Yeah, true. If you like, sat through 20 minutes of me yelling about a computer store. you have time for another podcast. Go and listen to it. Also, maybe get a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. Have a shit one.